I'm the founder and the developer for the Blend for Web project. And let's start. And before I start talking about Blend for Web itself, uh, I'd like to say a few words about the technology which uh, may, makes possible rendering of 3D graphics in browsers and this is called WebGL which stands for Web Graphics Library and it is basically that uh, this is basically 3D graphics working in browsers without any plugins so you just visit a website and it starts to work and uh, it is an established open standard backed by industry leaders and it is already supported in 90% of browsers which constitutes 3 billion users which already exceeds flash installed base uh, it works in mobile browsers too so this is very new young platform which actually you cannot just ignore is uh, it has a huge potential so let's continue um, here is some history WebGL started in 2009 as experimental browser builds and even before it became standard we started developing Blend for Web. It took three years for us to develop Blend for Web as well as for browser vendors to implement WebGL in all browsers until the first Blend for Web released last year. And a huge milestone was when NASA uh, launched interactive 3D web application called Experience Curiosity with Yeah, and you can run it by following this link I'm just following it is deployed on NASA website and is about famous Curiosity rover and uh, what you can do is rotate the camera to zoom. You can drive the rover. You can control its robotic arm. You can learn things and change cameras and so on and so on and this is amazing because to my opinion it is exceeds possibility of videos in this area so it's very important milestone I, I guess so blend for web is about connecting blender and the internet but what is it specifically? And uh, the answer to this question actually depends on who is asking. So, say you are a 3D artist, then I would answer that this is simply an add-on which will magically convert your Blender scenes to work in web browsers and uh, from a developer point of view this is yet another engine integrated with Blender which is intended mostly for 3D web development also for online games if you are a business person I would say that this is the solution which will help you in sales and if you are usual people, so this is just fun. 
but blend forward has some other aspects too and the first is that this is tool where artists and coders work and meet each other they are not hating each other because they are using the same tool and another aspect is that big industry 3D graphics meets another big industry called internet and overlap and create a new industry which platform web is good for and finally this is where fun can help make money so uh, Let's take a brief tour uh, about Blend for Web capabilities. So the main feature is Blender integration, of course. So you can just install the add-on and you can export with a single click everything you have on the Blender scene. It also supports animation of different kinds, including vertex animation, uh, skinning, material animation so on. It also supports shader nodes, which uh, I will talk about later. The award-winning uh, bullet physics engine is also supported and we add some extras such as characters, vehicles, ragdolls, <coughs> buoyancy. 3D audio capabilities of Blender are supported as well. Annotations are basically 2D information windows attached to 3D objects. Uh, Platform also supports high quality cascaded shadows and vast library of post process effects. And the logic editor, which we will talk, will, uh, I will describe a little bit later. And for outdoor environments, uh, it will be very helpful to use our features such as ocean simulation, dynamic scale, wind, and so on. But of course, features are just not enough. If you want a convenient workflow, and let's see what we can offer, offer in this area. And the first tool I'd like to talk about is our precious node, the basic logic editor and which is basically allows you to create interactivity without the need to involve programmer and this is small example so you have just two objects then if the user clicks on one object it uh, he is redirected to another to one website and it, it clicks on another object it, directed to another website so this is very simple and of course uh, this editor also supports uh, dealing with animation uh, sounds uh, materials and uh, networking simple math and uh, conditional jumps and so on and so on so it's about 20 nodes I guess Uh, another very important tool which is supported and uh, which was very difficult for us to support is Material Editor, which is uh, basically a GLSL node found in the Blender viewport. Uh, using them, an artist can create sophisticated, still real time shaders and uh, I will show you later what can be achieved and uh, finally the normal editor which is depicted on the left and it basically allows you to modify shader uh, surface shading by modifying normals and uh, some people believe that this is the best normal editor so far which exists for Blender and uh, it is very important to add detail without adding actual complexity because these models are downloaded 
via the internet and uh, should be local as well as possible. Should as as possible. So uh, I will show you some demos. And the first demo I want to show is annotations. So annotations are just information windows which explain provide some additional information about 3D object. They are here animated and this all is done in Blender and exported with a single click without any programming. Another demo is um, when you use particle system mixed with animated materials well, actually, it also has sound. I don't know how to, to enable it. Um, so, you have here real-time materials as well. And a bigger demo is about interactivity. So we got here a small helicopter and you can click on different parts, different bubbles and learn about technical specifications and you can also uh, replace materials uh, in an interesting way and this all is combined with graphics and uh, different graphics with animation and so on. Great interactive graphics and the first tool I'd like to compare them with this is Blender Game Engine. Uh, in fact, Blender Web shares uh, many settings found in DJE but it works in web browsers, the plugins, and mostly it intended for web development. Uh, anyway, desktop, mobile, native applications are still possible, and uh, native applications means that you download, <coughs> install, and run something. And web application means that you visit a website and that's it. And uh, of course, no logic nodes. I already told you, which are used instead of logic bricks and uh, to solve some licensing problems which can arise when you do some proprietor project, we offer a commercial license alongside with GPL. Uh, I, would like, I would also like to talk about web services uh, such as P3D in Sketchfab and others and uh, what I really want to emphasize that Blender Web is cloud independent and this means that you can deploy 3D content on your own website. This is your own website. You get you are in control and you are in charge. Still, you can deploy it on social networking services as well. And very interesting feature which Blender Web offers is the possibility to export as single HTML files. These files are just big, just like videos, so you can copy, you can open it, you can email them, you can embed them in a web page, and you can even use them as a website. 
And of course, Blend for Web is not just a model viewer, so you can do programming, animation, physics, sound, whatever. <coughs> and of course, I should talk a few, a few just a few words about Unity because Unity recently recently gained the possibility to export for WebGL and the main feature and the main distinctive uh, feature is that Blend for Web is open source and everybody here knows that it is better than closed source. <laughs> Just, yeah. Blender is open source too, and uh, another thing is that Blend for Web is native to the web and Unity is not. And this means that you can use it for web design, for mixing 3D and 2D components on a web page and use it alongside with other web technologies as well. And because of this, uh, file size and memory footprint are much better than Unity's and it works in mobile browsers and don't crash. And it is integrated with Blender and this means that you have to use your, your tool, your favorite tool and your you are not switching between Blender and some other editor back and forth. And because of these features, some companies, and some of them are big, started to abandon tools they were using. And from my experience, I'd like to inform you that they are mostly doing showcasing products and e-learning projects especially when it comes to expensive things such as houses, industrial equipment, cars, luxuries and uh, to demonstrate the possibilities of Platform Web in this area we even created a bigger example uh, we tried to reproduce a real manufacturing enterprise in 3D on a website. <coughs> this is their plant application. It can be found on our website and it basically explains the process of manufacturing milk starting from transportation and through different steps and I'm proud to tell you that it is optimized to work on mobile devices as well so it works on my phone yeah <laughs> So this is this is how milk is actually made. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, specifically to create this application, we contacted with engineers of a real dairy plant. It was fun. So, yeah, this is it. And I'm proud to tell you that specifically to use, okay, thank you, specifically to use Blend for Web, some of our customers switched from Autodesk tools to Blender. And uh, in conclusion, I would to repeat that you already own skills which you can use in the realm of 3D web because of Blender Web and 
you chose Blender and PCs was the right choice. You, you now got an advantage and I hope Blender will help you to cross this bridge to 3D internet. Thank you. In glossy materials? Uh, whoops, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask uh, us on forums. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so my first question, very simple, <laughs> uh, is there, when you want to switch from uh, the Blender uh, game engine to uh, WebGL, is there anything that uh, WebGL, uh, that uh, Blend for Web ca can not do that uh, the Blender game engine could do with Python AP? <laughs> well, um, some people on Blender Arches forums also admitted that uh, Blend OEP is more powerful <coughs> already than BGM. And uh, other missing features, if they are, if they exist, uh, can be added quite easily. Um, in the web, you can sometimes use um, VR, I did the VR thing, and they have a, a library which connected to this um, gyroscope in the phone, so web plus VR. Do you think it's possible or you have plans that in such a, yes, this environment from platform? 3D model from web. Uh, I read a lot about GLTF, for instance. But uh, is it something now well established, or uh, have we to use something else? Uh, well, this is a lot about GL. Yeah. 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 
it's defined by uh, by the Kronos group, yep. but uh, it's yep. uh, it's a baby for yep. now. Yeah. Uh, Wedgel is uh, yeah, it is backed by Biggs. It is backed by Google, Apple, Microsoft, Adobe, Autodesk, and so on and so on. And uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Um, thank you. And my question to upstairs is: Is the brightness of the screen is that normal this way? It looks like it's dimmer than it used to be.